and he identified that there are various biases that we know right. so many biases we can't right. begin to know them all right. but confirmation bias is the one that a lot of people have heard of which is where once you believe a thing any other information you repackage to fit your current belief you don't do it knowingly no. but you just only believe what you believe right. until something comes along to really shift you that's yeah. just major yeah. um so if you're if if perceptually most people don't have these different places to step into then the next bias makes perfect sense and it's called binary bias mm. and you look at trump in the usa you look at brexit in the uk you look at uh, putin you look at all these horrific far-right uh, demagogues right it's not that the people that support them want the end of the world even though from our perspective we might paint the picture that oh yes you know yeah the you, the you know he's being endorsed by the church don't they know and then you go oh they want the end of days and you go oh, mate. so <laughs> each side of that argument has people that are intelligent passionate totally believing in that perspective right. and they literally literally cannot see the other side they know it's there yeah. but all they can do is cast disparaging comments on them mm -hmm. and i know that from my own family my brother my dad and his girlfriend are three of the most intelligent people i know letters after their name all that sort of stuff they literally they get angry and abuse the other people and i sit there going you have no awareness yeah at all mm -hmm. so i don't think that most people can become self more self-aware without the correct education mm -hmm. which is expansive not restrictive mm -hmm. so the last part of my book we got how many minutes four minutes left on this podcast That's okay don't worry about it <laughs> so the last section of my book i'm writing this book not really thinking and uh, ultimately i was trying to change the world at primary stage i couldn't do it and i i failed for three reasons i didn't know how my brain worked and why i was so threatening to other people I was giving myself away for nothing mm -hmm. and doing it on my own and I was doing it on my own without a team without anyone else around yeah. me so as the pressure bill I broke and right. then behaviors to do with being left alone kick in mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know addictive substances blah, 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 all these yeah. negative behaviors yeah so um where did I where does I go to there well the three behaviors and then uh, yeah causes so, you yeah, so so uh, that's why I failed. So this time round, the first thing I did was put the idea out there. Then I built a team. I've got an international team of 12 who mm -hmm. are on my business page and say they're employees for the company. I am getting feedback from the affected groups and, and all sorts of other women all the time mm -hmm. because it's about them. I've just finished reading... Uh, the moment of lift by melinda okay. gates and it's a fantastic book both sad and amazing and uplifting uh in the stuff that it reveals so the last section of my, of my book was called a trip or is called a treatise mm -hmm. on the evolution of human consciousness because the 19 or so different things that i packed into this primary program are all about perceptual fluidity mm -hmm. i wasn't telling the children anything mm -hmm. i was letting them fly mm -hmm. in their minds mm -hmm. so that that's basically we can't change our current crop right it, it, it's a it's a bad harvest but we right. can we can well no not even we can someone has to provide a large-scale opportunity Mm -hmm. to change the lived experience of enough people because women are people mm -hmm. enough people to shift the needle so mm -hmm. they go whoa what happened there right so that's basically what i'm into yeah yeah i can kind of think energetically that is happening right now already it is with but, people like yourself yeah. Yeah, but I think energetically behind the scenes, 
it's happening but we it does take conscious effort you yeah know, you know it's, yeah. You, it's not going to happen on its own it's just conscious effort well yeah. i think actually now you point that out i'm being a bit uh, binary biased myself so in the uk the extinction rebellion protest did you hear about them in america mm -hmm. so there's this group called extinction rebellion and they sat in around where parliament was and they're holding these protests where they just peaceful protest yeah. but they just won't move and what happens is over here well so okay we get a packaged version of america tv which is yeah. to say our own narrative but you've got your right-wing opinioners yeah. and they go, oh, yes, people, peaceful protest is good, but now it's gone on too long. Yeah. So have your little protests, but if it actually inconveniences any of us, <laughs> oh, now you're on. Uh, and you go, holy shit, mate, you literally don't get it. We are dying in our hundreds and thousands around the world, not so much in the developed countries yet. Right. But Europe's been on fire for the last... Right five weeks right so you know there are there everyone has their own version of truth um mm -hmm. it's just that the objective truth of our environment i don't think is a negotiable you can delude yourself about why mm -hmm. but you cannot well you can it's not happening and that's yeah. the point yeah. yeah with with the singular mind with the one perspective, I don't see hope. Mm. But with what I know children are naturally, and so I know can be restored, mm -hmm. great hope. Right. Because as you say, the outliers, the energy is coming through. Right. More and more people come off the grid. Firefox is a free is freeware there's so many people doing free work and and uplifting work and, and value-added work for not for the money yeah not even for recognition just to be better right so yeah yeah, yeah. hope yeah. well you know you can all, all we can do is promote the hope and um share our light that's within us and um hopefully we gravitate to having more people around us that are like that and want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Um, it does take work. And, um, you know, many of the projects I've done is solo until before you know it, I got one or two more people and one, well, what can I do to participate? Well, you could do this. Oh, well, that requires work. And I said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. It does, you know, yeah. but what can you do? You know, what can you give for an hour in a day or what can you do so you almost have to break it down and say okay this is what you could do which one would you like to do and then um just do it you know we're not here to monetize you we're not here to beat you up if you don't do it but you know all these things have to happen in order to have greater expansion and a greater awareness so bring your gifts to the table and let's let's get to work you know so that's just my take, but it's just so, like, the, it's just like the kindness movement. You know, there's so many people that want to do their own thing, but when you try to gather them together and say, okay, let's do this and help each other. Oh no, I want to do it my way. I want to do it my way, you know, and we have all this fragmentation going on, even with mm -hmm. kindness. So, um, and whether you do it as a business or not, you know, it's still fragmented. So um, anyway, so I, maybe that's just my bias, but that's just my experience. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it, it's, it, it is um, a challenge mm -hmm. to have the visionary thinking like you or I have. Yeah. To then let that go on its own. And in mm -hmm. fact, uh, we didn't plan this, but second in my power to be reviewed is this ego is my enemy and is the yeah. enemy yeah so in there yeah. there's a, a chapter on how people think they're too good to do xyz yeah and it's a bit like being precious over our baby mm -hmm. i to be a leader means you have to let people yeah you have to as you know but yeah it is it, uh, it's um it's the benefit of having fluidity of thought. Mm -hmm. Mm 
-hmm. is that you know you can't flex mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about social media too i know it's something yeah. that you're very passionate about indeed so basically uh, gender equality as uh is kind of the undertone so i'm speaking to a female connection on linkedin she goes yeah i get three or four email direct messages a day saying you're beautiful i want to marry you and i'm like really <laughs> uh, then, <laughs> then i speak to a few more of my female connections they go yeah yes every day yeah. um so we set up linkedin me too and did a few recordings with a, a couple of ladies that i know and horrific stories which had been normalized because they were so common mm -hmm. then i recorded a second and third series with different women so it was growing mm -hmm. and then we had a meeting with this woman who's a uh, coach and she said oh yeah uh, we should think about this uh, what about other platforms so i was then thinking and i came up with the idea as you know um, I mm -hmm. want to do social me too. So there's a LinkedIn page called social me too. There's a LinkedIn group called social me too. And there's a Facebook group called social me too. Mm -hmm. You can see stuff we've posted on there. These interviews mm -hmm. with victims is the wrong word. Right. Receivers of this abuse, but that's because abusers, you mm -hmm. think that by sending it directly, no one knows about it. <laughs> yeah well when women start talking about it suddenly every woman's going to stand up and go i got that today yeah and then your days are numbered right right that's all i'll say yeah. staring down the barrel of the camera <laughs> yeah yeah no i i mean we've done an interview together about it too because yeah it's it's still um it's still prevalent and we talked about earlier about abuse um being abused as children and then maybe what other ideas come up why men seem to think that it's okay you know and um yeah i get them all the time you know facebook yeah. instagram linkedin whatever and it's just sort of like saying next <laughs> yeah but that's the trouble is that yeah. it, it's just it's it's like so uh, it's like half your mind is occupied with threat detection and bullshit detection and scam detection. Yeah. And it just doesn't allow your mind freedom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which is the one thing that my various experiences have given me some time to think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Jonathan, I'm going to put your information in the video um, below us when I okay. post it. And um, definitely please uh, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Obviously, they on Me Too and LinkedIn. I know you're hev heavily active on in LinkedIn. So you can reach out um, to Jonathan there. Anywhere else, Jonathan? Um, no. Um, the Facebook social Me Too group is being run by two of the first women that I spoke to. Okay. Um, so just engage and the more stories we get, the quicker we get them, mm -hmm. the more we can share them and the more it will resonate with women because you're getting it every day, mm. every day. And it's not okay. And you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And like the original Me Too movement, we will reach a certain point where they go, oh, crap, we can't ignore them anymore, mm -hmm. which is what big tech is doing at the moment. Right, right. Yeah, they're not doing anything about it. So yeah. um, I'm kind of wondering, though, if we call out the, those guys that that are sending us the invites. I personally won't post material which calls people out. So my okay. role is I host these shows mm -hmm. to uh, show that number one, a man supports women in this. Uh, my partner is Gregory Austin, who connected mm -hmm. me with you. Um, so Gregory and I were shocked and horrified by this. And so there are men out there. In fact, probably even the majority of men out there are mm -hmm. decent men. And um, you know, this this uh, section of men that are treating you this way rely, all bullies and all abusers rely on isolating you from others. Right. And if nothing changes other than you go, oh, yeah, oh, he's a fucking, excuse me. Um, yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, he's just like, right, okay, I'm going to block him. I'm going to block him. I'm going to report him to the group. 
and we're going to get a count. And once I've got 400 accounts I've blocked in a month and the other 300 people in our group all have got 400, that's whatever it is. Yeah. Several. Then we send a message to LinkedIn saying, this number of users have received this many abusive uh, uh, connections. What have you done about these profiles? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I would, yeah. I was just thinking a lot of them are probably fake too. So, well, I mean, they set them yeah. up and, and close them down uh, yeah. as quick as you like. And it yeah. is so, you know, this is why I think it can change quicker than we might believe. Right. Because the nature of these particular men usually is that they are running these scams time and time again. Mm -hmm. And they rely on the weakness of the right. individual to break through right and so once we start to show them no no just because it's i'm on my computer in my house you will not isolate me from my sisterhood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah 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 so much more to discuss about a fascinating topic so thank you for joining us um everybody we really um i enjoy the conversation um jonathan and look forward to having many more with you on LinkedIn Indeed. and on Facebook. So thank you for having me. <laughs> hey, you're so welcome. Thank you for sharing your incredible story. I mean, mine is mild, very mild compared <laughs> to yours. <laughs> Everyone's is 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 subjective, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So absolutely. yeah. Okay, then great. Thank you, Jonathan. And we'll say thank good night you. and uh have sweet dreams. So <laughs> Okay, um, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm trying to leave. Stop recording me. <laughs>